and welcome to another webinar presented by Advanta IRA. I'm going to be covering is now a good time to invest in gold and other precious metals. My name is Alex Perny. I've been involved with Advanta IRA since the beginning of 2012. So I've seen uh, several cycles of precious metals kind of come and go within the market. And I would like to bring to your attention some interesting points on why there might be an attractive time to get into purchasing these types of assets in today's current market. If you have any questions after the presentation, please feel free to reach out to me directly. All my contact information is directly on the slide in front of you. And with that said, we'll get started. A little disclaimer before we get into everything. Advanta IRA and our employees, we do not provide legal investment advice or do, and we do not endorse or promote any investment product. All information here information and materials today are for educational purposes only and all parties are encouraged to consult with their attorneys accountants and financial advisors before entering into any type of investment so a few key points i want everyone to take away from today are how do you invest in precious metals what does that look like from the aspect of utilizing an ira to actually buy physical tangible precious metals whether they be gold silver or another type uh, what types and grades of metals can you purchase uh, just because you may find something uh, valuable, I mean, certainly things like uh, copper, steel, iron are, are inherently valuable to some degree. Uh, for the purposes of IRS investments in precious metals, they have to meet certain fineness requirements, and we will go over that uh, during this presentation. And some things that you need to watch out for investing in precious metals, because just because something uh, is touted as being precious metals or maybe backed by precious metals, maybe it's not always as safe or as sound as an investment as you might think, and some additional due diligence on your part may be required before entering into, in, entering into that type of, of financial agreement. So what are precious metals? Precious metals are generally defined as a group of scarce elements prized for their appearance, utility, scarcity, and liquidity, meaning that they are easily traded or sold for other goods, services, or cash for that matter. For, that matter. for the purpose of this presentation, the metals we're gonna be talking about are gold, silver, platinum, and a little bit more recently, palladium has come into play uh, as being recognized as an investment grade metal. Uh, you know, Throughout history, these metals have been used as trading currencies going back uh, through before Common Era, so uh, well before um, you know Common Era started 2,020 years ago, these things have been used for uh, trading, bartering, and and their value has been established within uh, many cultures throughout the world. So nothing really has changed from that point. And a good thing about them is that with them being tangible and scarce and really having a defined quantity, uh, their ability to hedge against inflation of a issued currency of a particular nation. Uh, or body uh, really is kind of an interesting aspect to look at when you're looking at investing in precious metals. Now, for the purposes of an IRA, the IRS does have definitions regarding how pure the actual investment has to be, meaning the percentage of precious metal held within the defined content of what you're actually purchasing. So how much gold is in the coin that you're buying or platinum or palladium, and then we'll get into that. Uh, but again, remember that buying the physical precious metals is not the only option. However, it certainly tends to be the more popular option for individuals or really any, any type of entity looking to invest into a precious metals uh, financial agreement. Uh, so why buy precious metals? Uh, as I said before, these have been desirable and traded commodities for literally thousands of years. Uh, the physical nature of the investment and its scarcity is seen as a hedge to current currency inflation, meaning the buying power of the dollar tends to, for, for one dollar, you can buy X amount of goods uh, in one year. And the same dollar the following year will buy less goods. Now, a piece of physical gold may be able to buy more of the same amount of goods for the same quantity over a given time or actually increase in value relative to the underlying currency that you are comparing it to. Now, that kind of gets into a little bit more of a complicated discussion, uh, maybe for a later date, discussing uh, inflationary rates and comparative market analysis with precious metals, uh, but it's just, it's kind of the concept of why people look to invest in, especially in turbulent times or times of high inflation, uh, because the relative value of the actual precious metal, although it does rise, and we are currently seeing that right now with gold trading at near record highs and, and has been at record highs uh, in the past few weeks of almost $2,000 
per ounce. The the value though relatively stays stays relatively stable. It will not fluctuate like something like a security will. Uh, for example, Tesla stock yesterday dropped, uh, I believe, over 20% of its value or a little bit less than that uh, in a single day of trading. Uh, you know, that is not something that is uh, typically ever seen with an investment into precious metals. However, you don't get the appreciation upside typically. Uh, it will maintain its value, but it will not pay a dividend or really have any uh, value past just what you can exchange it for at a given time. And then one kind of interesting thing that goes to the scarcity of this is that there's only uh, predicted about 190,000 metric tons of gold ever produced in the entirety of human history. And another thing is that although these are scarce metals that are valued for their trading capacity, uh, the element of the, the precious metal of silver is actually the most efficient conductor of electricity known to mankind right now. So its utilization within electronics and heavy industry is only continuing to grow as our integration with technology continues to become more entrenched. So these are some of the reasons that precious metals continue to maintain their value uh, is uh, additional uh, utilizations in heavy industry and also for the fact that there is very little of them out there creating a high demand and a low supply. So what are some of the types of investments when it comes to precious metals? It's easy just to say, hey, I bought gold or I bought silver, but for the purposes of investing with an IRA, there's some definite things that you need to watch for. Now, a lot of the times when people are buying precious metals, they are buying coins minted by a government agency. These are seen as the uh, uniform standard for most people when it comes to buying precious metals physically within an IRA or in general for, for most purposes. Uh, the reason for that being is that you have the backing and the trust of that government as to the purity and the tradability of that particular unit of precious metal. Uh, and then in some instances, they are actually uh, considered legal tender for a face value amount. However, that is typically significantly less than uh, the actual value of the metal content. Uh, for example, a U.S. minted one ounce gold coin has a US currency value face of $100. One ounce of gold trading at about $1,950 is significantly more than that. Um, but again, you can certainly still use it as legal currency, but the, the perceived advantage of doing so would be low. But the, the benefit is that you have a government agency and the regulation that goes into what they are making uh, to the purity standard makes it very desirable. And typically those things can trade for a little bit of a premium. You also have bullion and bars. So bullion can refer to any form factor really of precious metals. It can be a unstamped round, so just a simple circular disc of the precious metal. It can be uh, some type of ingot or other unit of measure or it can be actual gold bars when people think of the places like fort knox with large kilogram sized gold bars stacked up you know that certainly is a, an investment that you could look into as well and we'll get into some things that you have to look at when it comes to buying things other than government issued precious metal um, coins uh, then there's also paper market derivatives and exchange markets uh, these are things that you need to be very careful and very educated on before you actually pursue an investment with. Now, when it comes to paper gold investments, meaning that you are giving a entity or a company money in exchange for some type of backed investment backed by physical precious metal holdings. Uh, these things can be rife with issues from things such as uh, accounting issues to uh, outright fraud to uh, just the high, the low liquidity of the actual investment if you were to want to sell or liquidate your your holding within that particular company. So these are not something that we see a lot of clients doing. Um, some clients do it. Some clients have had great success investing in things that are, quote, backed by gold with a particular uh, entity. But again, I, I would highly encourage anyone that's interested in purchasing precious metals, especially if it's your first time uh, spend your time researching buying physical precious metals. It's definitely the simpler of the the avenues to understand and to get involved with. Now, not to say that there aren't there isn't plenty of money to be made in some some other 
factors of investing in precious metals, but uh, that's kind of my take on it and what I would recommend to people to look to first. But I like to always give people the full understanding of what exactly is out there. So you don't just think that there's only one avenue to do it. There are multiple ways to get involved with this and we'll cover them more in a, in a few different slides. Now, remember, they're not all created equal. So just because a government has issued a particular gold coin, uh, you need to make sure that one it is being issued uh, with a purity standard that is correct for the IRS finance requirements, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, understand that just because it is issued by a government doesn't mean that it meets those fineness requirements. Um, some government issued coins can command a premium. Typically, those are, excuse me, countries such as the United States minted bullion coins, Canada, Mexico, China, Australia, uh, Great Britain, and there are certainly some other um, countries that do mint uh, precious metal standard coins that are meeting the fineness grade requirements for an IRA to invest. But typically those are seen as, as bad of a pun it is, the gold standard of, of precious metal coins. Um, so if you're looking at those and you go to a dealer and the spot price of something is let's say $1,900, well, you might pay an additional markup just because of the type of the form factor of what you're actually buying. Now I mentioned that some government issued coins aren't don't meet the general fineness requirement for investing in an IRA. I'll get to the actual fineness requirements in a moment, but one very popular investment uh, going back into the 90s with this was the South African Cougarand. Now this is a 24 karat gold coin, but it doesn't quite meet the actual purity requirement for the IRS investment grade for you actually to hold it within an IRA. So although the South African Cougarand is certainly a very popular investment. Uh, a lot of people own them. I know personally people that have bought and sold them. Uh, typically they trade at a, a slight bit of a discount and just because of the fact that they don't meet the very stringent purity requirement for an IRA to hold it. Uh, so just keep that in mind that you do need to check the actual purity requirements and if you have a question, uh, ask your gold dealer most of the time they will know whether or not it is an IRS qualifying investment grade coin or bar. <laughs> now, if you uh, aren't getting a satisfactory answer, you'd just like to give us a call. Again, I've been doing this for, for a very long time and I can you know take a look at it and, and give you the, the rundown of what you would need to check to make sure that it, indeed it is qualified for your IRA to invest in that particular uh, gold or silver, platinum or palladium product. Now, as I mentioned there, there are paper investments with precious metals. One of the big benefits of buying precious metals is the tangible aspect of the actual investment, meaning that uh, if you want to have it distributed to you, you can physically put your hands on the metals that you purchase. Uh, it is a physical, tangible asset, unlike a stock or a security, as I mentioned previously, something like Tesla that can, you know, although I doubt it would, uh, something that could go out of business. You know, the gold, even though it may lose value, uh, increase in value, will always physically be there. Now, if you're going to invest in something that is based on gold or around gold, uh, something like a private placement that backs its investments with gold or invests in gold, now that's a little bit of a different story. Uh, you definitely need to consider uh, the fact that in these kind of situations, you don't physically own the metals. You own an interest in an entity uh, or some type of, of agreement with a company that is indicating that they are basing the value of your investment on metals that they physically own or have control over. Again, this has the potential to uh, open things up to some fraudulent investments. Uh, we've seen that and there have been um, some issues uh, some issuances by the Department of Justice and the Security Exchange Commission as to a growing number of these types of cases coming out. So it's not just uh, conjecture on my part, it is actually something that the regulatory agencies are taking a greater look at when it comes to uh, things that are based around gold and, and, and precious metals and not the actual physical metals themselves. Uh, these these investments uh, can lose value at a much faster rate than owning metals directly. One of the benefits of owning precious metals is that relationship with the inflationary rate of the purchasing power of the dollar. 
using the US dollar, for example, the purchasing power of gold will typically remain at a much more steady rate than the value of that same dollar year over year to buy the same amount of goods or services. Uh, with something like a paper investment, when you're investing into some type of entity that has a backing of precious metals, uh, you lose that completely. You're, you're, not, you're no longer investing in that physical asset. You're investing into some type of investment scenario where you have a lot of different factors to consider. And these investments are highly illiquid. With gold, there's almost always going to be a market to sell it or silver, platinum, or palladium. Uh, you know, the, there's always going to be the ability for you to take that precious metal and sell it for what it is currently worth. Uh, you know, and, and exchange that for U.S. dollars, uh, pounds sterling, euros, uh, Deutschmarks, uh, yen, whatever you want. You, you know, you can exchange those readily uh, in, in an almost instantaneous capacity as you would with cash for another type of currency. You lose that with paper investments. There's, unless you find someone else that really wants to be in that same investment structure that you are, uh, you're kind of stuck with that investment. And also there might be restrictions on the actual investment paperwork side that keep you from actually selling or liquidating that investment before a certain date. So again, these things are something that you need to definitely be an experienced investor to get involved with or do a good amount of homework and feel very comfortable before investing in something that is not actually the physical precious metal. Uh, and then again, you have very little control over that investment. One of the nice things with actually owning the physical metals is that you get to decide what happens to them. You can decide where they're stored. You can decide if you want to sell them. You get to decide if you'd like to have them distributed to you personally with a paper investment or something that is not directly the metal itself. You give up that kind of control. Okay, now I've mentioned that there are allowable grades and formats of actual precious metal investments within IRAs. These are defined by the IRS. This isn't something that Advanta has a, a say in. This is just uh, directly from the IRS's uh, own guidance and legislation. So gold has to be at minimum 99.5% pure, meaning that that gold coin if it says one ounce, it is that 99.5% that of that ounce is pure gold. Uh, silver has to be a little bit finer, it has to be 99.9% .9 pure. Platinum, again, a little bit purer than gold at 99.95. Palladium is the same as platinum at 99.95. Uh, so that's why it's the attractiveness of buying government issued <clears throat> precious metal products is, is very attractive because you have the refining capabilities, you have the infrastructure behind a government-owned agency producing something like this and the trust that comes along with it to know that what you're buying is that pure. If you're buying something from a third-party uh, assayer or forge, then you know if they say it is a certain grade, well, you're taking that private enterprise at their word, uh, you know, you, maybe you want to get it tested. Um, you know, typically that's not as uh, a, as big of a concern with a government issued standard. Uh, but again, you know, this is all about the trust that you have, and and there are there are people out there that sell these for a reason and have been in business for a long time. Now you can buy bars and rounds. They need to be from a, an approved source. There are refineries out there that are approved by the IRS. Typically, those are going to be ones that are allowed to sell and exchange physical metals on the NYMEX and COMEX exchanges, which are the New York Exchange of Commodities and the Chicago Commodities Exchange, NYMEX and COMEX for New York and Chicago, respectively. <clears throat> and you cannot buy any coin that's traded or valued at anything other than its bullion content value. So although you may see that a particular gold coin is worth $2 million, well, that's on its rarity as a coin itself, not on the actual content of its metal base. So <clears throat> you can only buy, you know, these certain coins that are deemed to have value based solely on their content, not on any other type of intrinsic value that is placed upon them by individuals that are that, that collect them. So I've mentioned pretty pretty thoroughly that there are issues with buying paper gold investments or, or precious metal investments or things of that nature where you're not fiscally buying the metal. However, that's not to say that there aren't issues with actually buying the metals directly. 
the dealer markup on metals can vary widely. So depending on what you're buying and whom you're buying it from, you have to be careful for the fact that the dealer has to make money as well. So they're not just, if the gold is trading at $1,900 an ounce, they're not gonna sell you gold for $1,900 an ounce. They're gonna factor in their overhead and their fees into that. And depending on what format of the gold that you're buying, again, things like uh, American issued coins might trade for a slightly higher premium than a Chinese minted coin. Exact same content value, but the market is maybe a little bit more receptive to people trading and buying US issued um, gold buffaloes or eagles uh, than they would be for the gold and silver uh, Chinese pandas. So that's something to definitely consider is that you have a markup that the dealer is going to add on there and it's not just going to be whatever the spot price of the gold is you're going to or this again the precious metals you're going to have to factor in what the dealer's fees are for actually selling you those you those uh, units uh, again uh, we've covered pretty 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 in depth the risk of fraud when uh, buying paper precious metals uh, paper investments in precious metals now storage costs and how they are paid so once your IRA has acquired precious metals you have to have someone safe keep them now there are some uh, IRA custodians out there I'm s certainly I'm not going to get into the weeds of of you know why or whom these people are that say that you can directly physically hold precious metals if you structure your IRA in a certain way at your own home or in a uh, personally held vault. Um, this is something that uh, we at Advanta um, disagree with. We encourage clients, uh, even if you are investing through an entity like an LLC or a trust, to absolutely still use a qualifying uh, safekeeping storage facility. Uh, the majority of which are located in, in Delaware. And I'll get into a few uh, aspects of how that works and, and how those things are, are paid. Uh, but keep in mind that any storage cost needs is going to be borne by the IRA, meaning that the IRA is going to have to pay for any and all storage costs associated with, those, with, with the storing of those metals. Now, to expound a little bit upon why that is, 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 is because precious metals in a technical sense are what what are considered a bearer item, meaning that the bearer of the item, per person holding it, physically putting it in their hand, at that point um, can be considered the owner of that asset, unless there's some type of uh, you know, written agreement or if it's in transit uh, or if there, there's a formalized storage agreement. If you are holding something in your own personal safe, uh, even if it's within, you know, you've purchased, you, supposedly purchased through an LLC, if you pick that up, there is no distinction between you as the manager of that LLC and you personally, and you have just taken possession of that piece of physic, of, of that piece of precious metals, and it can be considered a uh, dis distribution at that time. Um, that's why it really gets into a very big uh, gray area with regard to prohibited transactions. If you were to personally hold any type of precious metals uh, at, in a personal location, such as a vault at your house or a personal safe deposit box, I always recommend that people use a qualifying third party safekeeping storage facility. One, the security of these places is next level. They handle commodity exchange board precious metals they have more security than anyone could wish to have at their own personal house or even their local bank. Um, it's, it's something that they take obviously very seriously to be in business and uh, you know, their, their track record of security and safety is certainly speaks for itself. And, and I would encourage anyone to look at a few different options. You know, there's not one that we're going to tell you, you have to use uh, the, the largest one by way, by far and away is a, is out of Delaware and they're named Delaware Depository. Uh, there are many other uh, locations that you can use, but they're the ones that are used by the NYMEX and COMEX exchange boards. So uh, they're certainly the largest out there. Uh, but again, I would encourage you to do your homework if you're comfortable with utilizing someone like that. But <clears throat> using someone that specializes in safekeeping and storage, uh, you know, is certainly going to offer you a level of security that you are not going to see if you even did want to hold it at home or something else. Now, precious metals, even though they may have a, a face value of currency in that particular, for that particular government's currency, 
uh, you cannot use them as a contribution. So even though a gold American Buffalo has a face value of $100, uh, you cannot use that as a contribution to an IRA. Uh, it is generally accepted that it is being sold as a investment grade of metal content and not actually its currency. So it is kind of a, a bit of an odd area but that we don't run into very often, but it is important to understand that even though they are considered legal tender, you cannot utilize gold coins as a contribution to an IRA. Those have to be made in standard US dollars to an IRA for the purposes of your annual contributions. You also need to be, be aware that anytime that you have to have these metals shipped or moved, especially after you buy them from the broker, uh, they're gonna have to be sent to wherever that particular storage facility is that you're utilizing. Now, this is obviously need to gonna be insured and depending on the amount of metals, I know that some brokers will only ship them via uh, armored carrier. Now, that's not to say that your your ten, twenty, or even thirty thousand dollar investment needs that. Uh, that's when people start getting into hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've only personally, in my nine, uh, almost nine years of of working at Advanta, seen uh, I think two instances when someone uh, had to utilize uh, armored carrier service for the movement of their metals between the broker and the safekeeping storage facility. So it's something to consider, but I don't want to scare anyone um, with that to think that they're going to have to rent an armored car or anything for this. Uh, but obviously, shipping is going to be higher. It's going to be sent, uh, you know, tracked. It's going to be insured. So there's some additional costs, not just the same as shipping some documents. It's it's definitely going to be some some more expense just on the shipping side on on top of what you're already paying for the markup at the, at the dealer. And then also, you need to make sure what you're buying is authentic. Um, you know, that can that can be a little bit uh, tricky depending on, you know, whom you're buying the metals from. I would always encourage you to do research, uh, reviews, maybe talk to other people that have bought metals from this other particular broker or dealer, and just make sure that you're comfortable with the actual investment that you're pursuing and that the purity standards and the representation of what you're buying is accurate. Now, how does this work through investing through an IRA? Now, I mentioned that the metals cannot be held personal. You need to use a third, you need to use a separate safekeeping storage facility. We can provide you with a list of several different options. If you Google it, there are plenty, plenty more will pop up. Uh, now, some brokers will store the metals that they sell um, if you buy from them. Again, that kind of comes with its own set of precautions that you need to take to make sure that they're acting in, in good faith. But again, some people will offer that storage uh, service as part of uh, buying from them, and you're certainly allowed to utilize that. Uh, keep in mind that all costs associated with the storage of the metals must be paid from the IRA funds and not personal funds. So typically it costs about $100 per year to store precious metals at a particular storage facility, uh, and that is in commingled storage, meaning that the metals that you get shipped there are not necessarily the exact same coins you'll get back. Uh, if you want segregated storage where those exact same coins will be set aside in a separate um, accounting and then those exact same coins sent back out if you want to take a distribution or sell them, uh, that is charged at a premium. It's called segregated versus commingled uh, storage. Uh, but any of those types of of expenses have to be paid directly from IRA funds. You can't personally foot the bill for that. Um, you do not have to liquidate these metals for a distribution. So if you want to take a distribution out of your IRA, you can have the metals physically shipped to you. We have clients that will take their required minimum distribution from the gold holdings in their account every year. They'll have several coins shipped directly to them. They'll send a, a distribution request to us. We'll fill out the appropriate paperwork for the storage facility to ship the coins out and they'll receive them directly at their home. So there's no need to necessarily liquidate if you'd like to uh, have them distributed to you personally, you are certainly able to do that. Again, if you're buying through an LLC or other type of entity, a lot of people like to call this checkbook control. We do plenty of presentations directly on doing this type of investment structure. If you elect to buy precious metals in this type of investment structure, you do need to have a separate storage company for those metals. Um, and again, some precious metal brokers will offer storage options. I would just really encourage you to uh, make sure that you're comfortable with uh, 
with that because one of the nice aspects about having metal shipped to a uh, safe even storage facility is that they will confirm indeed that they did receive exactly what was indicated on that shipping invoice as opposed to buying from buying from and having the metal stored at the same place there is a higher degree of trust that you have to have that they are acting in good faith and everything is being done correctly uh, so just to keep in mind that there might just be some additional layers of work and just a few additional questions you want to ask if the broker is going to be acting as the safekeeping storage facility with that So with that said, uh, you know, we've been doing this uh, for a very long time. We've been servicing clients nationwide uh, with our exceptional service for people looking to invest in precious metals and, and other types of assets. Um, we have a, a lot of experience in this. Uh, currently, we administer over $1.3 billion in assets for our clients. So we have a, we have a lot of experience in, in doing different types of self-directed investments. And if you want to buy precious metals or gold, every single client, no matter what they're investing in or the size of the account, has a dedicated account manager. You have a singular point of contact for someone that's going to take care of the purchase, any questions about the safekeeping, any ongoing questions, or if you need to take a distribution. Uh, we have all of that set up for you directly to be taken care of by a single individual, so you don't have to go through a call center or anything like that. So it makes the act of, of buying a physical, tangible asset such as gold, silver, platinum, or palladium a lot easier and a lot more attainable for people. Uh, and just some of the uh, the reasons that people like to self-direct, you know, it is a new source of capital. Uh, if, you know, if you don't have the money on hand to invest in precious metals directly, because things like gold, platinum, and palladium are very expensive, silver being the cheaper of the options. But maybe you want to hedge some of your investment funds out of the stock market, especially with the high volatility we've been seeing in current uh, markets due to COVID. It's an election year. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to factor into high volatility that make investing in precious metals very attractive. And the ability to self-direct and utilize uh, <clears throat> Advana to invest in those things with an additional source of capital uh, is definitely a good benefit. You know, if, and again, if you're tired of what's going on in the markets, if it's just being a strain, uh, you know, it's it's definitely a good option to be able to have to invest in these uh, these tangible assets, and also get the appreciable gain of anything that is going up with the precious metals at a tax deferred or completely tax free standpoint. So let's look at a case study of buying precious metals in an IRA. So this is Joe's gold deal. He has $150,000 in a traditional IRA and is interested in buying gold. Joe decides to invest in American minted gold coins. He finds a dealer with pretty good fees. Uh, and he negotiates the amount of gold uh, he wants to purchase, decides where he's gonna have them stored. And they come to in a purchase price of $125,000 even. So what does he need to do to finalize this transaction? First thing he needs to do is open and fund account open and fund an IRA account. He needs to complete an IRA application. Uh, this is gets done within a day. Uh, we have everything set up and working to get those funds moved over from his current 401k or IRA within the first 24 hours of getting that IRA application. So now after he's negotiated with the dealer for the type and the amount of metals to be processed, to be purchased, uh, we'll need to make sure that we have a purchase invoice that is properly titled in the name of the IRA. Because remember, the IRA is actually purchasing this as its own entity. You personally are not buying these metals directly, the IRA is. So that's why you need to have Advanta involved. So the metals will be titled in the name of, for the purchase invoice, Advanta IRA for benefit of FBO Joe Smith IRA number. He's going to approve all of the documents associated with the purchase. So the purchase order, uh, any of our forms that need to be completed, which for this case is just a general waiver and a precious metal by direction. And then after that, we ensure that all the documents are executed correctly and the order is transacted correctly and timely. So <clears throat> once Joe has read and approved everything, we will complete the purchase by wiring the funds out to the gold broker. Uh, again, if they want to accept a check or an ACH, cashier's check, however they need to receive the funds, we will send it in accordance with what they need and how Joe wants to have it sent out. Uh, after the purchase, the dealer receives the funds and the physical metals are shipped to the storage facility that Joe has chosen. Joe directs Adva Advanta in this case to pay all expenses from cash in the IRA. Remember I said that any and all expenses related to the ongoing storage 
<coughs> excuse me, of these metals and of these investments needs to be borne by the IRA directly. Joe cannot pay these out of his personal account. He can't put a visa on file with a safekeeper. He needs to make sure that there's cash, US dollar cash in his account here to pay those ongoing expenses. And we automate those. As long as there's cash in the account, we automate those to make sure that everything is kept in good order and none of those kind of invoices lap and there's not any type of delinquency on the uh, safekeeping um, agreement. Now, going forward, we act as the record keeper and administrator of the account. IRA, Joe's IRA grows to the price increase of the metals, and then he can hold the metals indefinitely or sell them at any point. And keep in mind, he can also distribute them if he'd like to physically hold those and doesn't want to have them in the IRA any longer. And again, remember, that can be either uh, deferred taxation on his gain or no taxation if he did it through a Roth. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool aspects on how he can mitigate or completely reduce any tax exposure uh, from the gain that you might see in the value of those precious metals. If you'd like to learn more, we hold weekly events. Uh, if you want to learn learn where to see those, go to our events tab on our website. We hold virtual lunch and learns. We hold webinars every week. We have our Pitch, Promote, and Prosper event, which is a wonderfully successful platform where investors can come together to find each other, to make deals happen. Uh, you know, as Advanta, we cannot promote or endorse or sell any products, but we we bring people together to make those deals happen, to pitch their deals, to promote what they have going on. Uh, at the last Pitch, Promote, and Prosper that my colleague Larissa and I did, we had over 100 people on the Zoom call. It's free to attend. Go to our events tab, register for it. We would love to have you on one of those or any one of our other webinars. Uh, your attendance and your, your, your use of our content is what helps drive us to make newer, better, and newer, better content more often for you. So please do consider um, registering or subscribing to our YouTube channel as well. We upload all of our videos to YouTube. Uh, and if you do want some more news related items with regards to IRAs and investments in general, we do have a, a regularly updated blog. Again, I would, I would love to address uh, any questions that anyone has. Uh, we've had clients investing in precious metals here since about 2004. Uh, we had seen all different shapes and sizes of different grades of investments, different things that clients have done, uh, different types of coins from different countries. Um, so yeah, we just like to make sure that uh, with, with the increase in popularity of precious metals that we make sure that people understand that they can and how to invest in these things. So I will uh, stick around till we have about a third of the people that we started with. Again, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you got some useful information out of this presentation. Okay, so uh, I or my Roth IRA owns some silver coins. What do I need to do when time comes that I want to sell them? Since I hold these coins now, how do I claim no tax? Um, so if your IRA owns the coins, um, you would need to find uh, someone to purchase them. Almost every single gold dealer that sells precious metals will buy them as well. Again, uh, you need to factor in some, some different things of what actually might drive the actual price that they're going to give you for that particular gold or silver holding. Um, but essentially when you sell anything within an IRA, it's all reported back to the IRA and you don't have any taxes that are due uh, to that since so it's, it's an exempt entity. If you have something like a 401k or a SEP IRA, the same thing holds true. The tax ID number associated with the sale of the precious metals within that type of account construct uh, would not generate any type of taxable liability. Um, now, if you are taking a distribution instead of a sale, then you would need to, uh, you know, you'd bypass the broker, have the safekeeping storage facility send you the metals directly, and the IRS form 1099-R would report the appropriate value um, of whatever you had taken out of that IRA. Uh, okay, let's see. We have a question. Uh, worried about volatility surrounding the upcoming election. Is this a good time to buy precious metals? Well, unfortunately, I can't answer that question directly. I can't advise you on what to do, but historically, uh, the reasoning behind investing in precious metals has been a, um, a hedge against market volatility. So while securities prices may fluctuate wildly with things like uh, natural disasters, elections, uh, political climates, uh, the, the price point of these types of investments remains relatively stable. Now, there may be a drop, there may be a gain, but the the amount of that price fluctuation is typically much less. So if you're looking for something that might offer that, I would strongly encourage you to do some more research and see if that precious metals are a good fit uh, for you because they also can be a good hedge against inflation depending on current market 
market conditions as well. Oh, let's see. Uh, do I have any resources that might point this towards a good for researching specifics of buying these materials uh, and their trading values? Or what type of Google searches would I start with? Um, it is, uh, it, yes, I, I would honestly, um, if I were in your shoes, I would just take some pieces out of that um, about, um, you know, gold trading rates. Uh, I would search uh, uh, gold uh, potential issues. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things that we can kind of get into, but ultimately the specifics on your particular investment and the reasoning behind it are really what's going to drive um, whether or not it's a good fit and, and to the type of product that you are um, investing in. Uh, let's see, Bill asks, what are advantage fees for the management of this process? <laughs> so we charge $100 per year to hold a precious metals account and we charge $35 per purchase. So your account can have as many precious metals as it likes. It's 100 bucks a year for that account. Um, and then it's uh, $35 for the purchase, um, so long as that we are uh, sending an ACH. If we send a wire, um, it's a little bit more expensive. There's an additional $30 fee for that uh, if you are sending a wire. Uh, let's see, can I hold either of these in a solo 401k or HSA? Absolutely. Uh, if you wanna buy precious metals in a solo 401k or a health savings account, you can absolutely do that. The process is pretty much the same. You need to have a safekeeping storage facility and negotiate the price, uh, but either of those two accounts are certainly able to hold uh, precious metal holdings. Uh, let's see, Herbert asks, are there advantages to buying gold in a Roth versus traditional IRA? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say the advantage lies in the underlying asset, more so to do with your current tax situation and the uh, future taxable increase that you might be seeing. So most of the time people find it more attractive to purchase precious metals within a Roth account because you never have to pay any taxes on any of the gains that you have in the account and your underlying basis is distributed tax and penalty free. So any type of contributions that you've made to that account can be distributed tax and penalty free. And if you have invested in precious metals, you can distribute up to that value of metals tax and penalty free as well. So if you had, let's say $14,000 in contributions, you could distribute $14,000 worth of gold from that account and pay zero taxes or penalties on that. Now, if you had had any, um, if the value of that precious metal had increased above the 14,000 of your basis in that, you would potentially have some taxes and penalties as opposed to a traditional IRA where you are always going to have taxes and penalties underneath of the age of 59 and a half. So, I would say the Roth is a little bit more flexible, but ultimately what, uh, you know, the best advantage is, is more of a personally um, derived answer. <coughs> okay, can these be commingled with other types of assets or do I have to have a specific uh, precious metal account? No, you can certainly have precious metals held in the same account that you hold real estate, that you hold a mortgage in. You don't need to create a separate account. Uh, here at Advanta, uh, if you already are a client, in order to invest in precious metals. We have plenty of clients that have, uh, you know, maybe some gold and silver, uh, maybe some platinum in an IRA, as well as a piece of real estate. Uh, so yeah, there's no need to create another account. You can have everything on one account, so you can look up your online access and directly see everything that's going on with the account, your holdings and the like. All right, looks like that we are just about through with everyone. Again, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I enjoy teaching these kind of classes uh, and, and your attendance directly affects our, our motivation to continue to bring you new and varied content. Uh, so thank you very much for attending. I really do appreciate it. I hope you got something good out of it. I hope this was a good use of your time today. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to give me a call. That's my direct line right up on the uh, last slide there. So please don't hesitate to uh, reach out to me past that. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thursday and everyone out there stay safe. Have a great day.